Hi folks, I'm back. I'm doing a little bit of filming just to show you what I've been up to. Let's have a little look. See you in a minute. Right, as you know, I have a terrible problem with my PC. I did put down a, a little uh, video yesterday just to show you that I was still about. I haven't been doing any projects at all. I've just been trying to clear this garden. Plus with all the uploading of stuff and getting all my PC back to square one again. Uh, and also waiting for some new camera gear to come and stuff like that. So um, hopefully it will improve my videos as well. I'm back on the old GoPro at the moment with me uh, lavalier mic or the tie mic, so to speak. So. You'll probably find that the quality is pretty good anyway. It always was pretty good anyway. But um, I've actually invested in some new lighting uh, and I've got me old Panasonic, not me Panasonic, and I've got me old um, Sony HD camcorder out working on the tripod as well. Because a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing on our new channel will involve some sort of uh, interior work and that means you've got to have some pretty decent lighting. I've actually bought four of these little things. These are Niwa uh, video lights. And although they're very small and compact, they're actually very good. And they've got a little telescopic uh, handle on them there. These are run by batteries, which are uh, basically Sony batteries that you put on the camcorder anyway. So I've bought a job lot of them. And all you do literally is just literally turn them on. And they actually give a great white light. Although you probably can't see it here at the moment, but uh, at night time, they really sort of, or in the dark situation rather, they really do illuminate pretty well. So I've actually got four of them and I'll show you me set up now. One of the biggest problems I've got is that normally when I'm talking to you to camera, or when I'm doing a bit of work on my own or whatever, or if Gary or Sharon's with me, if they're not in my direct proximity, the problem is, is that they can sound very distant, uh, far away, and I may not pick up exactly what they're saying, especially if I've got any music or backing track uh, on the track as well. And two options was to get them mic'd up separately because my microphone which I've got here is actually controlled by a little uh, a Zoom H1 recorder which isn't connected to the GoPro camera whatsoever. So when I, I record basically the audio on, on the little microphone here and the video is being captured with the video, uh, the little GoPro's camera uh, microphone on board as well, which isn't a very good one. That's why I do a separate recording. And then I import both of them files into my editing software, and then I have to line up the audio recording with the video recording and marry them together, and then I can edit the, the uh, video uh, by turning down the volume of the uh, actual video recording. So that's what I have to do. That's a procedure I have to go through. So if I want to mic somebody else up independently with mine as well, I have to, I've got two, another H1 Zoom recorder, which I, let's say for example, I have to give to Sharon. But if she's near to me when we're talking, even though she might be mic'd up independently and have her own uh, tie clip mic on, there is a bit of bleed over where you can slightly hear me on her one and vice versa. And that creates all sorts of problems in the uh, video editing. So the only other option there was to either stick with just one mic and make sure that the person's pretty near to me so that they can hear me, or, utilize a boom microphone, which I did have anyway, when I used to have a, a, a larger uh, mini DV camera, so I still got that equipment, but utilize that with my uh, cam, uh, sunny camcorder, which I'll show you in a second, and utilize the recording directly into the camcorder. Well, the problem I had was that my new camcorder hasn't got a, an XLR jack on it, only a little sort of mini 3.5 millimeter jack and my boom mic which I've got which I'll show you has an XLR jack and was operated uh, by phantom power so that meant me having to buy an adapter for my camcorder so that I can connect my XLR jack into my little 3.5 jack via the adapter and also provide what they call phantom power so let me just show you what the setup I've got and this is what I can actually use now for situations where we're all in the room or all in the local vicinity to each other and to record sound so let me just show you that right well as you can see here i've basically got my normal camcorder this is just a standard hd camcorder which is uh i used to use for video editing but i stopped doing it because of i wanted better sound and these sound recorders uh microphones pickups on here are really not very good when you're actually recording someone so on certain video recorders like this one you have the option to plug in, for example, a separate microphone. 
but as you can see my microphone jack is a little 3.5 jack on there and this was my boom mic which is a, a condenser microphone and this obviously has an output which is an XLR connector and this has to plug in and be powered by a separate power source called phantom power so what I've had to do is to buy this adapter here and bolts directly onto my camcorder it's a, a Beach Tech DXA8 adapter uh, it's, it's powered by a little 9 volt battery in there and what this does it gives me the facility to be able to operate I don't know if you can see that 48 volt phantom power so that means that uh, this unit can power this microphone and then I obviously need a means of getting it from here into my camcorder and that is done if I just spin it around by a microphone adapter lead that comes out and literally plugs straight into my recorder like that and then my phantom power microphone literally just plugs straight into there so that when I turn my camcorder on and when I power on the unit, it's got a power switch there. This power now is picking up the, uh, the, the audio from the microphone as opposed to the onboard microphone. And this is the quality which I can now use, which records directly onto the hard drive, so I don't have to actually import two separate files. As I say, this is okay when you're working for uh, more, more than one people in the camera and you want some ambient sounds or whatever. So that's what I'll be using in them sort of situations. And that's the sort of a setup I needed to have. And I've got over it by just buying this Beach Tech uh, DXA8 adapter, which provides me with a phantom power now. So all in all, I'm basically kitted out now for uh, more professional video recordings and also to capture more audio around me rather than me just talking as well. Anyway, that's enough of that for the moment. Let's just show you. <laughs> I've not done a lot because um, we've also just been sort of trying to sort this computer out and I've basically got there now. The only thing I can't get working at the moment is me, me printer, it won't marry up and I can't, I've tried downloading the software, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that at the moment. So, but that's not as if that's the only printer I've got, we've got many printers in, in, this, uh, in this house anyway. So let's just show you what I've been trying to hack through in the garden, uh, all the brambles and all that, and with regards to the pond and all that. Let's just show you that. Right, well, as you can probably see there, it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but uh, this, it uh, was mounted right up there and we've burnt it back on uh, two or three occasions so this is just the latest fresh bit and over the back of the pond I don't know whether you can see here this now has been cleared from there probably up to just where that lamppost is or past that lamppost that's where all these brambles was and I've taken all them down so far and there was a tree there as well which I've actually removed I've got this tree that's got to come down here all these brambles have got to come down all this has got to be leveled and dug up and that will be then pushed into the pond all tamped down put some gravel in there as well and then topsoil over the lot over the top so with regards to this tree this tree is going to be coming down as well this stops a lot of light coming into our living room area there we've got our christmas tree over there which we planted all oh, probably 14 years ago as a small little tree like that about that size and now it's obviously got so big now but we're going to actually chop this down because the roots are are really getting thick on that now and we're going to be donating that to somebody anyway so that will probably be someone from the uh, the village or one of the hotels or or something like that for example so that's going to be going this year we've got this big tree here which started to fall down last year this one here as you can see it's leaning right over and how low it is look I can touch all the branches now but as you can see this tree here comes right over and bends right the way over and it's literally all hanging down one side. The tree used to go up there as well, and that dropped down last year. I don't know if you remember that last year, and fell down there. So sometime when this sheds its leaves, we're gonna to have to take this tree down because it's literally leaning right over this way and quite dangerous. And one of our fears is, is, is that it could actually fall in the high wind, and either drop on someone or drop on one of the dogs or whatever. So that's something else we've got to get sorted. So yeah, this is all what we're left with at the moment over here. As you can see, quite a rough land at the moment. All this has got to be leveled and all this earth that's raised here is going to be pushed into the pond. This is probably all the earth here that come out of the pond originally and was just piled up here. And uh, as you can see, I've got another load of brambles to finish off there. And that tree, as I say, has got to come down as well. There is a power supply over here as well. I don't know whether you can see that. That was for the pond pump. So I'm going to probably try and utilize that as well. 
and walking along the pathway here. I'm trying to, what I'm going to do is this pathway here, I'm going to continue right the way along. And as you can see, it goes through the pond right to the end. Now that pathway that way is going to stay. I'm going to lift all these tiles up, rebed all them, but I'm going to need to obviously lift these tiles up along here and also down the other side. And to continue that tile line along there, they're going to have to be filled in there, obviously. So I've got plenty of spare tiles to come in for that. What with the ones that are actually buried over in the in the um, hedge there as well. And then from here onwards, I was going to have a, a a vegetable, uh, a fruit garden over there, but I've changed my mind for the moment. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna level this lot to the, the same level as this lawn, and then just reseed it for the moment. So coming back here, what you'll have is the pathway coming literally right along there, right along there, to make this patio area bigger. This will all be relayed here, and from there, back all that way will be the lawn so to speak so that's what's planned for that with an edging stone all the way around edging curb stones all the way around that's what we're going to do there for the moment anyway so that's that uh, some people have been asking for some more lawnmower videos Gary's been buying a few he got this one for I think it was a uh, 10 or 15 pounds the other day uh, he's just uh, done a service on that when he's got that one going I couldn't have filmed it because I've not been editing so there we go He's still got that one sitting there. I've still got all these there. I don't know what I'm doing with these at the moment. He picked another one up as well. I think it was the day before yesterday. And coming into the log cabin now, as you can probably see, I've been making a couple of alterations in there. I've had a little bit of a tidy up along here. And also, my water cylinder's gone at the end there. As you can see, I was gonna put some hot water in here for our uh, hydrographic setup now. I've got a few things in the pipeline where this may not be going in here now. So I'm not too sure exactly uh, what's happening with that at the moment. I can't really sort of elaborate on that at the moment, but um, I got rid of the water cylinder and that's given me more of a works, workspace area now. So this is gonna be all sort of cleaned and tidied up and ready for next year, so to speak. So uh, I'm happy with that setup at the moment. So yeah, we've got a few things obviously planned for possibly next year. And um, I'll let you into them when we uh, when we get a bit nearer to the time and that. Loads of work still here to do at the moment. As I say, this is just a little update video at the moment. And um, trying to get things moving now after, well, 10, 12, nearly two weeks of computer issues and problems and stuff like that. So yeah, again, it's just a little, just a little update vid, this one. And um, just to show you what, what we're up against and what we've been up against and what we are now having to deal with with regards to moving forward with our Retro Hacks channel as well. So once I get all this computer sorted out, things leveled uh, in here a little bit more, then I'm gonna start obviously producing more videos and uh, let's hope you start enjoying them ones as well. Anyway, that was just a little update vid on uh, what's going on and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.